Who needs a big old long oversized truck to handle their scale hauling needs? Because we have the new Ford F450 Super Duty Dually in the house today. This is a big 110 scale sized four wheel drive truck that at the heart is a solid axle trail truck rig while looking the heavy duty part with a one of a kind officially licensed Ford F450 Super Duty body. So let's check it out. Now before we go drive and speed run this heavy duty hauler, we need to point out that this is a ready to run truck and comes assembled with the electronics, this painted body and an included transmitter. No work is needed to get this truck moving, but the transmitter requires four AA batteries and the truck requires a 2S or 3S LiPo battery pack. Now in terms of top speed with a 3S LiPo installed in this truck, we were able to achieve a 14 mile an hour top speed. And with the two cell LiPo, we hit a whopping 10 miles per hour. Now it may not be very fast, but it has big hauling torque, which you can change to have more top speed, but we'll talk about that later. Now, since this truck is ideal for your heavy duty scale hauling needs, it comes equipped with the officially licensed Ford F450 Super Duty Lexan body, which is two Lexan pieces actually, one for the cab and one for the bed, and then they've been secured together in the middle with screws and washers. And once secured, this is a big body with a 17.6 inch wheelbase. In fact, the truck is over 26 inches long and over 11 inches wide. So it needed a big old body and this F450 Super Diddy fits the bill. For size comparison, here it is next to a standard 12.3 inch trail truck, the Enduro Trail Runner. Now to continue on with the body, you'll notice it has a lots of decals used all throughout to highlight the grill, lights, the windows, and other scale details to make this body look as real as possible to the full size truck. Then to make the body seem just a little more realistic, there are big oversized hard plastic side mirrors with reflective decals found on each one. And you'll also find hard plastic windshield wipers on the windshield. To finish off the scale look of this super duty truck are the officially licensed American Force H01 Contra wheels mounted to Fury low profile Country Hunter tires, which are officially licensed through Furry off-road tires. These tires are glued to the wheel with the wheel secured to a hub with 10 screws. Then the hubs are attached to the axle via 12 millimeter plastic hex and a four millimeter nut. Now, if we pop the body off, you'll see that this just looks like a stretch trail truck with again, a 17.6 inch wheelbase. Now to achieve this, this steel frame rail is actually three different pieces being secured together to give you that stretch length. Now toward the back of the truck is this big old plastic battery box that uses two hook and loop straps with cutouts in the front and rear to accommodate any two or three S LiPo battery that you may want to use or an impact. Now, if you move up front, you see here are all our electronics. We have a chassis mounted servo. It's said to be made by Savox, although the front doesn't have a model number, but it has 12 kilograms a centimeter of torque or 167 ounce inches of torque. Now for our ESC, it is a Hobbywing WP1040 40 amp brushed ESC. It is waterproof and there's a T-style connector attached. It also has a voltage cutoff for LiPo and and for nickel metal hydride batteries, but it's set from the factory into LiPo mode. So if you wanna use nickel metal batteries with the e this ESC, you'll need to move that jumper into the NIM mode. Now here's our receiver box. It is sealed up with some screws for our lid and it looks like it's waterproof. Now lastly, our Super Duty features this 550 size can brushed motor and then it also uses 32 pitch pinion and spur gear with a slipper assembly inside. And then next to our motor is our transmission. It's kind of a standard three gear transmission with metal gears inside. Although the transmission can have the gearing slightly changed. It's right now from the factory in the high torque mode, but there is also a high speed mode. So you pop one of the gears out that's in there, you reverse its direction, and then you adjust the gear spacing and put it all back together, and now you're in high speed mode. Now the speeds we mentioned earlier were from the high torque settings, 
If you have it in high speed mode, your top speeds will be increased. But if you're doing some hauling or big loading applications, kind of like this truck is intended for, you're gonna to wanna to leave that transmission in the high torque setup. The last thing to mention are the shocks. They're plastic shocks with threaded spring adjuster nuts and they're mounted up on these stamped steel shock hoops. The shocks are also oil filled and they're pretty smooth, so it gives the truck quite a bit of suspension. But it doesn't allow the shocks to have too much suspension, articulation, or flex because the truck is equipped with sway bars on the front and the rear, which will help the truck stay flat when you're driving it and help prevent any torque twist in the front end when you're pulling a load. Now these arms right here, it's kind of hard to see where I'm pointing, but that's part of the sway bar arm. Now that attaches to this metal post that goes through the chassis via a wire that goes through that arm. So each side has a wire through the plastic arm connecting the post. Well, when we unboxed our truck, one of those rear arms was missing the wire. So what we did to fix that is we just took a one and a half mil L-shaped Allen wrench, there's one included with the truck, and we stuck it through the post and that arm, and it fits, it's the right diameter, so we just measured up how much length we needed, dremeled off that L-shaped Allen wrench, and then stuck it through there and tightened it up, and within five minutes, we're able to fix that sway bar. Now, I'm not sure if that metal wire wasn't installed on in the truck or somehow fell out during shipping, but we couldn't find it, and luckily, it's a pretty quick and easy fix. Now, if we flip over the truck, you get a good look of everything else, including our three-link suspension on the front and the rear. Now, like I mentioned, there is a CMS chassis mounted servo up in there. We have a steel skid plate here, and then our drive shaft shooting to the back and the front. You can see this is our rear drive shaft extender that has a dog bone in it to power those rear tires. You also get a good look at all the plastic braces that are connecting the two chassis rails to make the whole chassis pretty stiff, except at the very ends where there is some flex. And lastly, you get a good look at our axles underneath. They are a multi-piece design. They have a removable diff cover up here. The front drive shafts are dog bones, but they're not bad looking axles though, and they do provide quite a bit of ground clearance underneath. Now, one thing to note about these axles is that they use actual working differentials. They're not locked up. So the differentials will have free spinning motion to help enhance the driving performance of the truck. But if you want this to perform and act more like a trail truck, you're gonna have to go in there and lock those differentials up yourself. Now, when driving this rig and the way that it's set up, it feels very much more like a proper on-road vehicle than yeah. it driving like a rock crawler or trail truck. On the more high traction pavement outside, the truck remains really flat as it drives around. It doesn't want to lean a whole lot because of those sway bars, but if you do push it hard enough and kind of get the rear end loose, you can slide it just right and you can get one of the tires to lift up and diff out that rear end. But the truck mostly drives flat, it turns flat, it stays flat. And then when driving off-road, the truck performs all right thanks to its four-wheel drive drive system. Every once in a while, these kind of small, hard, low-profile rubber tires do spit out on the terrain. They don't contour so well like proper rock crawler tires do, so they're a bit harder on the uneven surface. So in off-road, there tends to be more wheel spin, more diffing out, more of a struggle to just find the traction and momentum. Now, as we mentioned, the top speed for the truck isn't that high, and that's okay. Fast speeds aren't really the intended application of this truck. This truck is meant to pull your other 110 scale rigs with ease, and that's why the transmission comes geared low. Having four tires on the rear axle, or a dually setup as it's sometimes referred to, even further promotes the super duty loading and hauling capabilities of this truck. It's definitely a truck you would probably walk with or behind as it hauls your gear and your crawler. Now the one downside we found with the truck happened to be the transmitter range. When we did our speed runs, we probably took the truck 50, 100 feet away from us and it did lose signal with the transmitter. Now I imagine how most people will use this truck is to be walking with it alongside of it behind it you're gonna be right there with the truck and not have any transmitter issues. But if you are outside bashing around, you probably aren't gonna to wanna to drive it too far away from you. Now, as far as actually adding trailers to the truck, 
there are a few options available, like this massive boat trailer from RC Four Wheel Drive. Here is the dual axle trailer from Extra Speed. And then this is the smaller leaf spring trailer from Ya yeah Racing. And then just for the fun of it, here is the axial SCX24 in the bed of the truck. Now currently there aren't any really good ways to secure a trailer to the hitch on this truck. Now there is a hitch attached on that rear chassis brace right here, but it's, it's not technically a bumper, but that rear brace does have a trailer hitch on it. Now the problem with that is it's probably uh, a few inches or centimeters away from the outside of the body, so you would need a trailer hitch that's pretty long to extend all that way under the body and then poke out, out, out here on the outside. Currently there aren't any aftermarket trailer hitch extenders for this truck. Maybe Sen will have something down the road or an aftermarket party might offer something. But in the meantime, to attach a trailer on here, I think you're gonna have to get creative in creating your own fastening system. But all in all, this is a pretty cool truck. It's big and beefy with lots of torque meant to pull your other scale rigs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the Sen custom truck. If you have any questions about it, check out the links we've got down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave us any questions or comments down below. I'm Brett from A Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.